the Chag of Sukkot, we have the special mitzvah of Yeshiva HaSukkah. To dwell in the Sukkah for the seven days of Sukkot. And Chazal teach us that the mitzvah of Sukkah is connected the Anani HaKovayd, the nays of the Anani HaKovayd that surrounded B'nai Yisrael when they left Mitzrayim, when they traveled through the Midbar. And the obvious question arises as to why, why specifically is this nays highlighted? There were so many nisim, so many miracles that occurred throughout Yitzhiyat's Mitzrayim and their travels through the Midbar until they came to Eretz Yisrael. So many wondrous nisim, the Makas, the Kriyas Yamsuf, the Mon, the Be'er, so many, so many wondrous nisim and the Flois that the Rabbi Shalom bestowed upon Klal Yisrael. Why Dafka specifically the nais of the Anone HaKovayd? Why Dafka that nais? Secondly, if we are to commemorate that nais, the Anonim surrounded the Yisrael from four sides. And amazingly enough, the mitzvah of sukkah requires two mechitzas and a tefach. It doesn't even require on all sides to have the mechitzas. If we are commemorating the nais of the Anone HaKovayd, why not four mechitzas? Perhaps the explanation is as follows. There were many nisim that the Rabbi Nishalaylam gave to Klal Yisrael, bestowed upon us. Many wondrous nisim. Nisim that were lamalam midera chateva, nisim that anybody would realize, even the nations, everybody would realize that the Rabbi Nishalaylam is sending a miracle and the Rabbi Nishalaylam runs the world. But the specific nais of the Anoni HaKovayd that required something else, that required some analysis, some understanding, some inspection and introspection. They could have traveled through the Midbar thinking, mistakenly assuming that it wasn't that hot at this time of year through the Midbar, it wasn't that cold that the winds weren't blowing, that there were no snakes and scorpions. They happened to travel through a path that was safe, calm, serene. They had to understand and think about it, that outside of those anonym, there's a howling wind, there's a burning sun, it's freezing at night. There's all kinds of dangerous animals and snakes and scorpions. It's only because they're protected through the anonym that they're traveling safely, that the ground is smooth and it's a level path and there's no hills and valleys. That required thought. And that's what's required of us on Sukkot, to take our daily lives, things that we take for granted, that the life that we live, which we assume is normal, that's a nice. That all of the things that we take for granted, health, a safe place to live, temperature-controlled environments, our daily life is a nice from the Rabbi Nishalayim. And this is what the mitzvah of sukkah demands of us to think about our daily lives, think about the things that we take for granted, and understand that our daily lives are innate from the Rabbi Nishalayim. Our health, our welfare, the house that we live in, temperature-controlled environment, all these things that are daily lives, that we assume that's normal daily living, these are nisim from the Rabbi Nishalayim. In the Midbar, they were surrounded by the Anone HaKovayd. Some of the Nisim that the Anonim provided were Lamala Midar HaTeva. Their clothes were laundered. Their shoes were not worn out. There were things that they could readily see 
were Nisim from Hashem. Essence of the mitzvah is to think about the Chazde Hashem for the things that we take for granted. Therefore, it does not require four mechitzas. Because part of the Nisim that the Anonim provided were Lamalami Derechateva. And of course, we thank Hashem for all of that. But the focus of the mitzvah are on things that without thinking about, without having a deep appreciation for, we will not really come to understand that they're Nisim from Hashem. And that's the essence of the mitzvah. To focus on daily occurrences that without thinking, without thinking, we won't realize that this is a Nes from Hashem, that this is a Chesed from Hashem. We live a life in today's world where Baruch Hashem and most Kehillus, there's a shul to go to, regular minyonim. How many generations, how many Kehillus dreamt of having Kehillulim in their communities, yeshivas in their batimidroshim, shuls, where everything was readily available? It was a dream throughout the generations. Dari Dairis, B'Shenim, Achreinim, Choshev Yidin, Tairi Yidin, a dream to go to Eretz Yisrael. And nowadays, perhaps we take it for granted. Go to Eretz Yisrael, go to the Kaisal, live in Eretz Yisrael. How many of the greatest Talmud HaChemim would be just a dream to be able to be Paiseya, Dalid, Amis in Eretz Yisrael? And Nais, they would have considered it the most wondrous nays today, maybe we take all of that for granted. And so many of the other things in our lives. Sukkah is the mitzvah of sukkah when we leave our homes, we leave our daily lives. We go into the dearest hour, we go into the sukkah to be misboinen, think, think about our lives, think about the things that we take for granted. Understand that they're from Rabbeinu Shalom, appreciate that they're from Rabbeinu Shalom, and to take that back into our homes, to be over the Rabbeinu Shalom, understanding and appreciating every aspect of our lives, that it comes from Him, and how much we owe and thank Him. And this should be a chilek of our avayda, we should be zaycha, this sukkus, to be able to continue and take that message with us and incorporate it in our